Recently, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for an international seminar. It was a joyous occasion as Master and disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During her visit to meet with our association members, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of fellow initiates. Throughout the ages, compassionate, enlightened masters have urged people to surrender to the greater universal power by seeking the divine within, from which all other goodness and happiness follow. This message was echoed again in Supreme Master Ching Hai's discussion with the theme Dhyana Paramita, the great practice of meditation, with our association members during the international gathering on January 9, 2009. It's been a long time since I read the Diamond Sutra. I read them when I was younger, you know, twenty something. And I revered it like a treasure because my monk masters, you know, told me that this is the ultimate of all the sutras. You have to revere it. Then you will understand everything. Then you be liberated. Then you are a true good Buddhist. So I, I read, 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 you know. I read very fast because it's a long one. So I read faster than now, of course. In the morning I don't have much time. That's why all the monks, they keep the rhythm with the wooden fish, you know. And then he read faster than Mushita. <laughs> the man who has a world record for fastest speaking, and the Buddhas had talked many sutras like this, and they're all precious, yeah, according to my uh, monk's teacher at that time. But they just give you one at a time, you know, because if they give you everything at one time, you nothing is precious anymore. Okay, now we continue with this. It's very short, it's only one page and a half, <laughs> and we had fun. <laughs> okay, now the Buddha continued. He said, Subhuti, suppose there should still be a disciple who asserts that the Tathagata had some ideas about the Dharma that guarantee him in seeking to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Be it understood, Subhuti, that the Tathagata truly had no ideas of the Dharma that warranted him in seeking to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Okay. Yeah. Now you understand, right? You know what Tathagata is? It's a Buddha. It means the Buddha. Okay. Also the same. Just one of the name of the Buddha. Like sometimes you say to God, O oh God, Almighty, All Merciful, Omnipresent, Omniscience. Different. Now the Tathagata means the Buddha. If even somebody some disciples of the Buddha proclaim that, oh, the Buddha has a method, you know, of enlightenment, just like we say Kwan Yin method, for example. And the Buddha know exactly that is a method. Well, it's just a way of saying. But there is no method, is there? Yeah? When you sit in initiation, did I tell you any method? No, there's no, truly no. So even if we have to say like that, we say, okay, I have a quantum method for you, then you can become enlightened. But it's not like a mathematic, you know, two and two make four, and then you become a Buddha, that is six, you know. It's not like that. It's truly not like that. Similarly, in the Buddhahood or, or anything else, it's like that. It is something that is not for the mind to even understand. So during the initiation, we just sit together, you know? Or I don't even sit with you, I sit at home. Maybe I was cooking for Supreme Master Television at that time even. Yes. So it's not like, okay, I have a true method that is written black and white that will guarantee you to be enlightened. But you get enlightenment all the same. But meanwhile, there's truly no method. We say Kwanin method, but there's no method, is there? Huh? Yes. It is just universal power that is working between us, yes. 
are working within us once we agree to tune back into ourselves. Then the universal power will work through the Master, or the Buddha, or the Christ, or the Prophet, for example. That's it. The whole thing is similar, you know, like, okay, there's no conception about Buddhahood. There's no conception about attainment, enlightenment, and all that stuff. Not the conception that we can explain in the worldly language. That's what he meant. Not the conception that the people think in their mind that the human race thinks, okay, enlightenment is like that, enlightenment has to be like this, the Buddha nature is like that. It's absolutely no and no and no. That's why after the Buddha spoke for many years, uh, many decades, and he asked his disciple, did I ever say anything? <laughs> I say no. No, the Buddha didn't say anything. And so many sutras, <laughs> incomprehensible <laughs> sutra. <laughs> yet he said he didn't say anything. Because the Buddha really did not say anything. The Buddha did not say anything. But Sakyamuni said something. The Buddha nature doesn't need to say anything to any Buddha nature. But the mind needs to listen. So Buddha probably explained this to the disciples' mind to appease their inquisitiveness, yeah, to calm their mind, to make them understand a little bit intellectually so that they leave the soul alone and then we can enter ourselves, remember ourselves again and be ourselves again inside, without the hindrance of the mind, without trouble of the brain. Okay. I really worship whoever translates this because... <laughs> He must have been <laughs> having trouble with the Sanskrit term and the English term and all this incomprehensible Buddha nature in here. And he can translate it. It's incredible already. And sometimes they don't even translate this directly from the Buddha Sanskrit, you know, from the original. They translate it maybe from Sri Lankan language or maybe from uh, Chinese, you know, or maybe from Vietnamese or Korean or Japanese even from the many generations. Sabbuti, the Buddha continued. The Buddhahood to which the Tathagata attained is both the same as Anuttara Samyak Sambuti and not the same. <laughs> the same and not the same. <laughs> like, I am me and yet I am not me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is truly like a koan, you know. You cannot tell people that you don't practice Zen here, you know. <laughs> we are very Zen right here. The same but not the same. This is only another way <laughs> of saying that the phenomena of all things is of one suchness with Buddhahood and Anuttara Samyak Sambhuri, and that it is neither reality nor unreality but abides together with all phenomena in emptiness and silence. Inconceivable and inscrutable, again. Wow, okay. In that case, we don't bother, you know? It's inconceivable. Why bother? <laughs> After all, it's inconceivable. Saputi, that is why I say that the Dharma of all things can never be embraced within any arbitrary conception of phenomena, however universal that conception may be. That is why it is called the Dharma and why there is no such thing as the Dharma. Wow, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> okay, so whatever it is, it's not it. Okay. <laughs> Now we got it, okay? Whatever we got it is not it. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. That's why it's called diamonds. Wow. So the Buddha say that everything has the same essence, you know, in this essence. It's either not reality or reality, but a bind together with all phenomena. All phenomena mean all things that's created, eh? All their creation. 
in emptiness and silence. Plain language is that we all have that essence within us. Yeah? And that essence is quiet. It doesn't even talk. Just abide in emptiness and silence within us. Yes. There's nowhere that that essence is holding on to. So you can only say that it abides in emptiness and in absolute silence. If that essence were to be so loud every day, talking to us all the while, then what would we do? You see what I mean? The Buddha nature. Just abide within all things, but all quietly, without any attachment to anything. Therefore, we do not understand it. Therefore, we do not see it. Therefore, we cannot perceive it. But we can perceive it in silence also and in emptiness. We have to also become emptiness. We have to also become silence in order to perceive the thing that abides in the emptiness and in silence. That's why we meditate in silence. We merge again with emptiness and with silence, and then we perceive that which is ourselves, which is, you know, the essence of all things. And that's why we perceive that all things are one together. At that moment, the moment of deep concentration, we perceive somehow that we are all one. But at that time, we don't even feel that we and everything are one. It's just oneness. It's just oneness, one thing. Oh, so it's still inconceivable and inscrutable. <laughs> so sabuti. That's why the Buddha say the Dharma. Dharma means teaching in uh, Hindu, in uh, Sanskrit. The Dharma of all things, the essence of all things, the true essence, the true teaching, the true name of all things cannot be embraced. You cannot understand in any of the arbitrary conception of this worldly language. That's what the Buddha means. That is why it is called the Dharma and why there is no such thing as a Dharma. Okay, we stop it here because that's it. Okay? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you still want to seek your Buddha nature since it's not a Buddha nature? <laughs> You want to still come here to learn the Dharma since it is not the Dharma. So what do we do? You still want to sit around, yeah? Still want to know Buddha nature, yeah? In silence, yes. Well, all the things that you said to me, like, Oh, Master, I meditate and I reap big benefits. Yes, I have this and that, miracles happen to me. These are just small things. Yeah. These are just the little toys for comfort while you are in this transient and suffering world. But Buddha nature is yourself. It's something greater than all these phenomena, greater than all these miracles. So don't be so happy, just some miracles happen. Okay? Strive further, go more, more inward. You have to aim to get the real essence of all things, yeah? the real self. Yeah? Do not stop at miracles. Miracles happen all the time, whether you know it or not know it. Why? You are a miracle. You are the treasure of miracles. And when you awaken that miraculous power within you, things all come out. All sorts of things come out. Like this box here is full of candies. If they cover it, you don't see it. I just empty it all out and then you see all sorts of candies. It's originally in there already. You okay? It's like here you don't see anything but the juice in it. Yeah. If you open it and you pull it out, all juice come out. So either you think the master make miracles for you. Or either you think you have miracles within you, both are correct, because we are one, okay? Your treasure is my treasure, <laughs> okay? Your problem is my problem. 
It's just the time and space and physical condition separate us, make us think that we are not one, but we are one. That's all there is. Okay? And so we have to seek this oneness, yeah? seek the true nature of all things within the tree, within the stones, within the fish, within the worm, within the insect, yeah? Within yourself. This is what we want to seek, because we are all one. So if you are liberated, then all the things are liberated also. That's why the Buddha say, truly, if you sincerely want to deliver all sentient beings, then all sentient beings will be delivered, but none will be delivered at the same time because we are one, so there is no sentient beings. But nevertheless, <laughs> if we become Buddha, then we realize that we are one. Otherwise, there are a lot of sentient beings, yeah? Because we don't realize the oneness yet. But once we truly want to deliver all sentient beings, then we became Buddha. And then everything is free, not the five generations, but many generations. Thank you for joining us for Between Master and Disciples. Healthy Living is up next right after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. Heaven bless your days with sunshine, happiness and smiles. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.